Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. First of all, I have to tell you, I have a bad cold, and you may have watched my last two videos, and <laughs> my voice is pretty scratchy. I apologize for that. But you know, usually with colds with me, they last more than two weeks, and um, the show must go on, the filming must go on. Today we're going to talk about the genetically modified industry. I want you to understand it, some of the things that it does, and you know, some of the problems involved. Okay, so what happened is the United States government has never allowed the patenting of any, any type of seed that's found in nature. Okay, you can't do it. It belongs to nature. It doesn't belong to any one person. So this worked well for all of these many, many years. The farmers, what they would do is they would gather up a certain amount of their seeds from crop to crop, and they would save them for the next year, and then they would replant those seeds. Well, in, 19, in the 1970s, there was a loophole that was found at the patent office. And so what happened, the company Monsanto began, they went to the patent office and they began patenting up every single seed that they could. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to patent all the seeds that were in there and then they wanted to replace them. All of these different seeds, all these varieties, they wanted to replace each category of seeds with one of their seeds and it would be a genetically modified seed, and there would be problems with that. Okay, so instead of having like 30 to 40 to 50 different varieties of wheat, now you're relegated to like three to four different varieties of wheat. The thing is that there, there's beauty and there's wisdom in diversity of seeds. And taking all of these amazing seeds and then wiping them all out because you now own them and then replacing it with one or two seeds is a problem. But that's what they did. So the problem started arising because they did sugar beets, they did every seed out there. Now, in terms of sugar beets, genetically modified sugar beets, when they process that and they made, make high fructose corn syrup, okay, the problem with genetically modifying seeds is they don't behave, they don't act like a regular seed. All right, so with sugar, now you now have high fructose corn syrup, and it's in everything. So when people consume it, when they eat it, the body does not recognize it as a sugar. The body recognizes it as a fat, and the body says, store it. We don't know what to do with this. Now, if you look at people from the early like 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, the way that if they put on weight, how they put on weight, it's very different from today of how people put on weight. Two thirds of our nation is considered obese. And the way they put on weight, they have a lot of fat rolls on their back. And you know, I've often looked at that and I thought, I wonder if that is high fructose corn syrup. I wonder if this is all this genetically modified food, if it's causing that. In terms of wheat, genetically modified wheat and soy, 94% of the wheat and 97% of the soy that is raised in this country is genetically modified. Now, there is a book called uh, Grain Brain. It's written by a doctor, Pearl Mutter, and he talks about that the genetically modified wheat that now we make everything, every pastry, every cookie, every donut, every everything, all of our bread, it has 40 times the amount of gluten, okay? Like when I was growing up, Gluten issues were not even discussed. Nobody ever talked about gluten issues. And today, it's discussed all the time. Why? Because the genetically modified wheat that is now being used has all kinds of problems with it. And when you have 40 times the amount of gluten, of course you're going to have gluten issues. So let me tell you one thing that you can do. I have a friend with celiac, and her entire family has celiac disease. So what she has done, because of all the genetically modified flours, is she makes rice flour, which can get pretty pricey. I was going to buy some from her. It would cost me $25 just for the six cups of flour that I needed for my cookies, my chocolate chip cookie recipe. So anyway, she told me that she was experimenting with a brand called Wheat Montana. It's made in Montana, and it's an organic flour. And she said, everything I've made with that flour has not affected me or my husband or any of our kids. And she says, we've all been diagnosed with celiac. <clears throat> now, I'm a type O blood type, and type O blood people, they usually have problems with wheat and milk. 
So I decided I was going to try it, and I cannot believe it. It doesn't cause any bloating or any stomach aches or any digestive issues. It's amazing. You can get it at Walmart or you can get it at Whole Foods. There's three different types. One comes in a blue bag. It's Wheat Montana. The blue bag is the white flour. Then they have like a gold-colored bag. It's kind of a yellowish gold. All right, that's kind of like the, the spring wheat. So it's not just totally um, hard red winter wheat type of a, a flour. And the other one is a dark brown bag, and that is the hard red winter flour. So you can choose from those three. Go out and try. Get a small bag, you know, maybe a pound or a five-pound bag, and start baking and cooking with it. And just see if your kids who have sensitivities to gluten, if they do better with that. All right. There are numbers of different articles that have been written on the genetically modified industry and other issues and problems that it has caused. One of them that they've noticed is it actually accelerates aging. And, you know, we live in the era that everybody wants to keep looking younger and younger and younger all the time. So if you understand that all this genetically modified fruits and vegetables and grains and everything else that we're consuming is genetically modified and it actually is accelerating the aging process. Another one, they're looking at how it possibly could be connected to autism. They're looking and they have found that it is definitely connected to reproductive disorders. Also with food allergies, digestive problems, and a host of other things. Let me suggest a couple of books to you. One is called Seeds of Deception. Excellent book. You need to read it. You need to take notes on it. You need to take it to heart. Another one is on the GMO Trilogy. This is a series of CDs that you can watch that are also very, very interesting. When I was talking to my students in college about genetically modified food, I started out with the question, who is the most powerful person or groups of persons in the world? Pretty much always their answer had something to do with whoever owned the nuclear power. And I said, yeah, but let's think a little bit further about this. Eventually, I was able to bring them around and help them to understand that the most powerful person in the world is the person who owns the seeds. Why? Because even terrorists and people with nuclear power, we all have to eat. So any, the people who own the seeds, that's the people who pretty much own the world. They're the most uh, powerful people in the world. Another thing about genetically modified seeds that I should tell you is that they're asexual, meaning they don't reproduce. As I mentioned earlier, a farmer can go out and he can gather in his crops and he can save some of the seeds that he will use those seeds to plant for the following year. But the problem is, is now he has all these asexual seeds <clears throat> and he's not able to use them again year after year after year, which is going to save him money. Now he has to go back to the source and he has to rebuy those seeds. If you're a farmer and you decide you want to change to an organic acreage and you want to start growing organically and you've been growing genetically modified, you have to wait five years and you can't do anything with the soil during that five years. It has to lay dormant before you can go back in and actually now start um, using heirloom seeds and organic seeds to grow your crops. If you are a farmer and you're surrounded all around you with genetically modified farmers, there's wind out there, and those, that wind can blow all of those genetically modified seeds or parts of them over to your farm. So you can understand the problems that it has caused, not only in the United States, but the entire world. And so if you go and you watch some of those videos or, or <clears throat> excuse me, the, the DVDs, or if you read about the book, you can see how this industry has just destroyed and caused, has caused a lot of damage to our food system. Become educated. Become aware. It may be extremely important not only for you as a parent, but also for the health of your children. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.